You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, get out, Get the point. Good. And now... Fendo. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hi there, ho there, everybody. And guess what? I haven't blown away yet. But I think I just might wind up in Oklahoma if this crap keeps up. Holy smokes. And uh, yeah, Miss Moosey, not exactly my favorite song either. But I really didn't want to go with the standard dust in the wind. Because it's not blowing dust. It's blowing snow. And it's blowing up my skirt and blowing. <laughs> it's freaking blowing. And yeah, I was jamming. <laughs> Just because I'm getting myself in the mood to do this silly radio on a Friday the 13th. <laughs> By the way, y'all are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair. And yeah, I was finally able to blast off. And holy smokes, do I have a tailwind. <laughs> Take that however you wish. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Damn, got myself all choked up. Yeah, I'm here on reallibertymedia.com, channel 3, and lots of other RLM places, including the RLM Spreaker channel, and later to be on RLM YouTube and RLM BitChute channels. So, yeah, I'm everywhere. I'm infecting your airways. <laughs> Yeah, Grammy, <laughs> it's going to be doing this all night long. Ooh, thank God I got extra blankets because, damn, I went, I went to let the dogs out just a little bit ago. And, um, yeah, it's a good thing I had a good grip on the door handle because, holy smokes, pulled me out the door. That's what the wind was. So I decided I'm going to use the other door to let the dogs out. And that one is locked on the outside and on the inside. Just so I don't forget. Because <laughs> my forgettery works really good. Compared to my remembery, yeah, the forgettery is real good. So, okay, let's see where all I am at. Let's see. Frederick Douglass taught that literacy is the path from slavery to freedom. And there are many kinds of slavery and many kinds of freedom, but reading is still the path. Yet reading and then critical thinking. Thank you, Carl Sagan, for that one. Okay, over here on Twitter. Hey, 393 stalkers. I tell you what, I'm kicking butt, taking names. <laughs> Usually I'm kicking my own butt, and yeah, the only name is like, damn it, Grams, what the hell were you thinking? Obviously, I was not. <laughs> oh, well, it's okay. Thank you, Barman, for tweeting me out over there on Twitter. I truly do appreciate it. And uh, let me go see who's over here in this effing site. I see Katie Tro Troxel has been busy, busy, busy. And yes, that is where the deep state is at, KD. Most definitely. In that place that um, I affectionately refer to as Israel. Oh, and over here on the effing site, thank you, Grimmy, for sharing it out. I truly appreciate that, hon. You just awesome. Let me see who else is over here. Uh, Grimmy, Mary B, Cowboy Tech, lots and lots, and apparently the DEA approves a synthetic marijuana for a company that spent uh, 500000 to keep weed illegal, and this just happens to be one that uh, 89 people have been hospitalized and two dead in Illinois after using the synthetic marijuana. Yeah, it's bad juju. If you can't go on natural, don't go, Okay. Just going to put that out there for you. I want you guys to be safe. And there ain't nothing wrong with, you know, every once in a while having a little imbibing. But, uh, yeah, some of this stuff is really... Oh, hey! <laughs> Sweet D's, I just love that one. She shared a, a, a meme of the photo that NASA doesn't want you to see. And you know what? 
it's a <laughs> this is not CGI this was not photoshopped I'm gonna go ahead and share it over here on the RLM just so as you know <laughs> okay um speedos no speedos are a bane on society gee ya I I consider speedos to be nothing more than just a marble bag and it's like really I don't want to see that I don't want to see that stop talking about those those are nasty <laughs> okay over here on fakie book Mary B and Gary L hey there you two and thank you for sharing it I really appreciate that and over on mines not real sure who all is over here on mines I did share a way cool video over here though of a little man that was born with just little stubs for arms and little stubs for legs and the little guy and I say man with like all man is all caps and in quotations and exclamation point cuz this little guy hot diggity dog he's got more heart than any 10 people that you know if you just pull him out especially any 10 people in the government holy smokes this little guy crawled up onto the slipper slide and got himself to go down it all by himself no help I don't want no help mama bless his heart he is just absolutely adorable and every time I see this I get all teary-eyed and I think damn you think you got it rough look at what this little guy does all by himself so yeah I don't want to hear no damn whining I'll send a freaking wambulance your direction if you want to whine about how rough your life is you know what life is rough sometimes but every day you have a new chance so get after it make it a good one and climb up there all by yourself don't don't be expecting someone else to help you some will but don't expect other people to always just step up and help you out okay over here in the RLM now that I've had my little rant a 50 year old pot belly quitos <laughs> those are just freaking wrong <laughs> it's like dude seriously you built a Quonset over your lawnmower what the hell shit that's just nasty that's a serious case of Dunlap disease your belly Dunlapped over everything you got below it <laughs> <laughs> okay now I gotta get that nasty image out of my head holy shit okay so over here in the RLM which is where you need to be if you want to give me static because yeah I got crappy internet and so I'm not gonna open a whole hell of a lot of chats so if you're listening in on Spreaker come on over to reallibertymedia.com think of a nickname sign into the chat give me some static or or give me some pointers cuz yeah I'll take all kind of pointers <laughs> oh where's dr. Ruth when you need her okay barman right up top hey barman the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world I also see cowboy tech who is always hearing pleasant voices sweetheart don't ever get your hearing checked and looky there Grimner is here the RLM God as well as the lovely moose girl and they're gonna be on later this evening for the freakers ball on this freaker Friday the 13th <laughs> and let me tell you the world has gotten freaking freaky Kate hi lovely Kate I am so glad you are having way better weather than I am out here although I am somewhat jealous 83 degrees that's what I had yesterday it was really nice I was out playing in the in the nice weather and then today it's like yeah I really think mother nature's bipolar <laughs> either that or she's just really pissed off with this infestation that she's got going on oh well hi Asmo how you doing hun and looky there Chal Sedoni's also here as well as a double dipping of Chloe 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 I be Don C is here as well as Java 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 doctor 2 and JJ's I hope you enjoyed that beer hun don't belch too loud or if you do make it a good one make it a rafter rattler um let's see Juana taco is here as well as the lovely rain and RLM fluke and Rob works who just fired up that bubbler thank you ever so much Rob works that's who yeah it's much needed hi trusty feller trust 
no one or trust no one. <laughs> I also see, um, let's see, Beetle. Hi, Beetle. How you doing? 420 early. Booyah. Dakota is in the house, as well as Dima and Frumpy. Yes, Frumpy. I had to, I actually got my uh, blanket fort all set up. So I'm ready to go duck and cover. Uh, let's see. I'm here, as well as I be Doncy Work, and Kozu is in the house. And Mmbot. I feel like one of those critters off of, um, okay, what was that movie? I had it, and now it's gone. <laughs> it was The Dark Crystal. Yeah. Mmm. Oh, well. Yeah. Obscure reference. Uh, Moy 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 is in the house, as well as Ninsun Dubois is logged in, and Poxified and Pom 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 Sauce are all three logged in, but they marked away, marked away. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Phantom. Look at all of those way cool buds you guys are sharing. Damn. Okay. Let's see, where do I want to go? I have been trolling the interwebs today, seeing as how it's too freaking cold to be going outside. I'm just kind of sort of, uh, the pot to the kettle. Really? What does the pot say to the kettle? You're black. Nuh-uh, that's racist. You're, you're, uh, you're, you're a colonist. No, what is that? Uh, pots and pans. Cutlery. Yeah, you're a cutlerist. Damn it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and close Twitter. Oh, Jesus, God, I didn't close it quick enough. There's a picture of Trump where you look up his nose hairs. Ugh! Jeez, oh, Pete, that guy's just not pleasing to look at to start with. And then when you have that kind of shot, ooh, that's a, that's a, ugh. <laughs> that's an appetite killer if I ever saw one. Okay. Um, I think I'll go with something fun first. How's that sound? And then I'll get into my bitchiness, and then I'll probably find something fun again. Just because, well, you know, it's a Freaker Friday, the Friday the 13th. <laughs> Cue the spooky music. Dude, when you hear the spooky music, don't open the door. Okay, this is from postize.com. If dictionaries were made by honest people, <laughs> there are actually honest people out there in the world. It's just none of them are in politics. Because politics, when you break it down, is many bloodsuckers. So, um, let's see. So, if you're looking for the exact explanation of words, dictionaries come in very handy and do the job perfectly. But the definitions on it are usually so boring and generic that they make you want to read them as fast as possible and just get it over with. But an Instagram user, HipDict, decided to make things a little bit more fun by modifying dictionary definitions to something that we can relate to and enjoy at the same time. So, number one, irony. It is a noun. It is drawing uh, drawing trees on paper. That is most definitely the definition of irony. Number two, I'm not saying that I'm poor, but <coughs> poor, an adjective, when you have too much month at the end of your money. Yeah. How about number three? Tomorrow. Once again, a noun, and it's the best time to do everything that you had planned for today. <laughs> this was written by Procrastinators Anonymous, by the way, or they would have written it if they ever get around to having their first meeting. Someone hasn't gotten around to calling people yet. Damn it. Number four, pets. A noun. The only members of your family that you actually like. Until you step on one of those lawn fudge things. <laughs> <laughs> and then you kind of go, no, I'm not real happy with you right now. That just squished between my toes. Gross. Okay. Uh, ooh, let me go so I can 
Swacken, 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 swacken. Hey, that's a new word. I'll have to think of a definition for it later. Um, <laughs> number five, study, a verb. It's the act of texting, eating, and watching TV with an open textbook nearby. I happen to know people that do that. Number six, clapping. Clap on, clap off, the clapper. So, or give someone the clap. Relay, uh, it's repeatedly high-fiving yourself for someone else's accomplishments. Hey, I like that one. <laughs> I got to remember that one. Yeah. What did I say about my forgettery earlier today? Uh, number seven, procrastinate. Booyah! What you're doing right now, or what, okay, what you are doing right now. So, get the fuck going and finish your work. F-bomb. So early, but it was right there on the page. I had to say it. Number eight, synonym. Synonym. That's not synonym. Like, or synonym. Synonym. Wow. <laughs> cinnamon, as in cinnamon rolls. No, this is synonym. Synonym. <laughs> Synonym. Say that three times fast. I triple dog dare you. It's a noun and it's a word used in place of the one you can't spell. <laughs> or the one you can't say. <laughs> oh, how funny. Okay, I'm, I'm enjoying myself. I don't know about the rest of you guys. Number nine. Calories. Oh, I know. I knew this one. It is also a noun. It's the tiny creatures that live in your closet and sew your clothes a little bit tighter every night. Little sons of bitches. I'm gonna have to have somebody come by and I need a need a pesticide kind of person to deal with them damn calories. Little bastards. Number ten. Single. A noun. A man who makes jokes about women in the kitchen. <laughs> That's usually closely followed by the clanging sound of a pan upside the head. But eh. Number 11. Bisexual. An adjective. It's the ability to reach down... <laughs> Whoa. Reach down someone's pants and be satisfied with whatever you find. Ew... Ew. <laughs> That's just wrong. Ew. Number 12. Teacher. A noun. A person who helps you solve problems you'd never have without them. Oh my God, that is so true. Yeah, you wouldn't have that problem if someone didn't tell you. Here's some problems for you to have. Now, go solve them. Thanks. I didn't have them. I had no problems till I met you. Thanks. Um, number 13. Whoa. Feet. Noun. <laughs> they are a device used for finding Legos in the dark. <laughs> or for finding landmines in the yard. Um, Yes, what? Winter storm warnings? Yeah, they're all over the place. Yeah, I'm under two winter storm warnings out here. Wind and blizzard. So, yay. Okay, number 14. Immature. That's me. I'll add this look in a mirror. It's an adjective, and it's a word used by boring people to describe fun people. <laughs> Oh, you're so immature. Yeah, well, get alive. <laughs> okay, let's see. What's the next one? 15. Best friends. A noun. The people you can get mad at only for a short period of time because you have important stuff to tell them. Yeah, you know, and probably later be sitting in a jail cell going, damn, we shouldn't have done that, but whee! Was it fun? <laughs> um, oh, wow. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me put this over here. Yard fudge. Yard fudge! <laughs> Hi, 
freaking Vinnies, you weirdo, you. You're a pervy little bugger. Um, basking in the desert of uh, wearing a... Oh, Vinny, honey, please, please do not wear Speedos. Because the only thing Speedos do is they make people turn away and run as fast as they can. Do not wear Speedos. They're bad juju. Whoever invented those things is just cruel and vicious and downright dastardly. Okay. Now, I clicked again because I thought maybe there would be some more. But you know what? There's a really cool um, article right after that. The Internet loves this woman's funeral for her youth in celebration of her 30th birthday. Ah, see, my ex was just totally freaked by turning 30. It's like, really? Shit, what the hell? 30's no biggie. Hey, you survived to 30. What the hell are you whoopieing about? You big baby. But yeah, he was totally freaked about it. And uh, so, you know, I um, I thought it was funnier than hell. But there's an awful lot of people out there that just totally freak about turning 30. And it's like, what the hell? What's the big deal? It's just, just, eh. Although, I got to stop and think. And I was kind of freaked about turning 50. So I thought I would just start counting backwards. And that way, by the time I, I kicked the bucket, I would be mentally the age that I figured I was. <laughs> if I was lucky. But my sister-in-law told me, add the digits together, which was, oh, even way more of a bonus because, yeah, I turned five years old. It was pretty cool. So, uh, let's face it, not all of us come to terms with this whole getting old thing. And in our youth, birthdays tend to be monumental celebrations, and some milestones are even more significant like than others, like turning 13 and becoming a teenager, finally. You know, although 10, booyah, double digit status. And then when you turn 16, um, which, you know, now you probably get to drive a car, although some states don't let you do that. And then there's also the 18th birthday, which is a big deal because most of the time that officially designates you as an adult legally anyway. yee hot yes. Uh... Maybe it's, oh, <laughs> that could, that could be, Graham, that could be. Mm. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's not forget when you celebrate turning 21 either, because in USA, that means that you can get to legally purchase alcohol. So that's a major celebration for a lot of you. But after that, celebrations tend to uh, sort of plateau. Instead, you have something darker to look forward to. Dun, dun, dun. Getting older. But you can also say, dude, I made another lap. Booyah. Few birthdays signify the end of youth quite like turning 30. It's a symbolic age of adulthood. You have no more excuses for not having your shit together. And it's kind of depressing. I didn't think so. It was like, this is so cool because on my 30th birthday, I went to a bar with a bunch of people that were, you know, like 18 and 21. And I got carded and they didn't. <laughs> I was tickled shitless. But... Moving along. Now, in recent years, however, plenty of us approach our 30s, um, decide that uh, this is a brilliant new adventure worthy of having fun. And we've seen people celebrate turning 30 as if it was their 16th all over again with a huge theme, two enormous balloons, a three and a zero, and oodles of decorations, you know, usually black. But then along comes Mila Blatova, and uh, she took celebrating a smashing 30th birthday to an entire new level of, oh, no, she didn't. She brilliantly, her brilliant celebration quickly went viral, and it's not hard to see why. It is as poignant as it is hilarious, and we literally cannot get enough. She wound up having a funeral for her youth. Holy smokes, woman. Damn, and she's dressed all in black. 
and she's got the balloons and I think I'm just gonna have to go ahead and share this with you cuz yeah this woman's she looks good in black and my gate don't swing that way but she still looks good in black just saying Vinny Speedo <laughs> Oh, Vinny, bless your heart, hon. Okay, let me put this. There's my fun stuff. <sighs> I'll put this over on the effin site as well, really quick. By the way, you know, if you are so inclined, we would truly appreciate it if you would um, donate over here to the effin site, Freedoms Network. The um, it's uh, if we don't get enough donations. It will go dark May 23rd, so please, everybody, kick it in. We'd appreciate it. I'm just going to do this one, and let me find another fun one. Uh, we'll do this one, and we'll do this one, and we'll do this one. Yeah, I have to, I have to really use all of my little emoticons, because I may not have them for long. Oh, well. Uh, dun dun. I gotta check mines because I got, <coughs> excuse me, some notifications. Come on. Wakey, wakey, mines. Uh, okay. People seem to really like to post in groups. Post on the main feed. I don't like going to the group pages. I'm kind of a groupist like that. <laughs> uh, Vinny, did you shart? You sick puppy, you. <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> um da -da -da -da. okay. Now I am going to go to my pocket because I did put a few wonderful things in my pocket. And um you know, since we're talking about oh you know, coming of age, all that other fun stuff. Here's something that's coming of age, or maybe it's just, it's about damn time. This is from yourhealthguide.com. Federal study finds marijuana 100 times less toxic than alcohol and safer than tobacco. This is by Dr. John Regan, and it's April of this year. So, Science once again catching up with what many already knew, but this is progress. There's a new scientific study that has investigated the toxicity of various drugs and found marijuana the clear winner. It's been found significantly less toxic than all the other substances on the list, including not only illegal drugs, but the legal alcohol and tobacco. So here's the full report. Claims on marijuana's med medicinal values have been widely debated despite support from medical research and study. Federal le uh, legislations that govern marijuana, uh, marijuana use aim to restrict rather than regulate, and this has posed a problem to people seeking the medicinal and recreational effects of the herb. It is an herb, not much unlike parsley or sage or rosemary or thyme. You got some time? I got a doobie. In any case, um, where was I at? So, very far from intentions of abusing its effects. Yeah, because it is an herb and they really don't, most people don't abuse it. So, what is it about marijuana that scares the government and the public so much? Well, number one, that is the propaganda spiel that started a long time ago. And because it is so beneficial, Big Pharma is quaking in its pill bottles. And therefore, those little shiver me timbers are felt all throughout Congress because if Big Pharma ain't making money, they ain't making any money under the table. Same goes for a lot of department heads. So, marijuana use in the United States, uh, marijuana colloquially referred to as weed or pot, is made up of dried leaves and flowers of the hemp plant cannabis sativa. 
Statistics released by the National Institute of Drug Abuse reveal that the respondents aged 18 to 25, more than half, or exactly 51.9%, have used marijuana. Percentages are lower in the other two age groups, uh, with 16.4% of respondents aged 12 to 17 and 45.7% of respondents aged 26 and older who were reporting marijuana use. Now laws in more than half the number of states <coughs> excuse me, in the U.S. prohibit marijuana use. <coughs> excuse me. You'd think I'd been token, whether recreationally or medicinally. Currently, in 2015, only 21 states plus the District of Columbia have passed medical marijuana laws that recognize and permit the medicinal use of the herbs. I'm going to give you a quick heads up. I got lights flickering and wind blowing like crazy. So if, if you lose my signal, it's because I lost electricity. Okay? Okay, numerous studies have reported the positive medicinal effects of marijuana on pain, sleep, and overall comfort. The survey conducted by TRIP in 2014 revealed that marijuana use was effective in, in improving mood, pain, muscle spasms, and sleep quality in patients with prost prostatitis and chronic pelvic pain syndrome and the data collected from a more recent study in 2015 by Degenhart revealed that marijuana use in conjunction with prescribed opioids were able to induce effective pain relief in respondents experiencing chronic non-cancer pain. These studies further support the popularity of marijuana use among people experiencing acute and chronic pain. Yes, I got a flasher going on. Um... I uh, know. Thank you, Vinny. Okay. Um. So. Uh. Da, 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 da. Okay. On the other hand, there has also been studies on the adverse effects of marijuana, and one of these was published in mid 2014, focusing on the negative health effects of smoking marijuana, particularly on the increase for lung cancer. Of course, the study was only able to reveal how it was smoke, not cannabis itself, that damages lung tissue. This problem could easily by, be solved by changing the method in which marijuana is administered. But is marijuana use as dangerous as the law makes it out to be? The intoxicating effects of marijuana, although different, are not thought more severe than that of mild to moderate alcohol intake. A substance, a substance that is not illegal anywhere in the United States or most countries all over the world. And a study published in January of 2015 um, assessed the comparative risk between different mind-altering substances, specifically alcohol, tobacco, cannabis, and other illicit drugs like heroin, and surprisingly, the study revealed that cannabis was the least risky substance, belonging to the other end of the spectrum. <clears throat> so do you know what substance was revealed the most risky? Alcohol. So how is this possible? <clears throat> The study used an approach called the Margin of Exposure, or MO. I wonder where Larry and Curly are at. Yes. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Okay, the margin of exposure, which is drastically different from other studies that simply attempted to find causational relationship between two factors. One, substance use slash abuse, and two, mortality. Mo is different. It's a ratio between the estimated average human intake and the benchmark dose, or toxicological threshold. Basically, it's a ratio between how much humans typically intake and the dose at which the substance becomes dangerous. 
which is a better judge of how risky a substance can be. The higher the MO is, the higher its spot on the list. And the results of the study were conclusive. The highest spot belonged to alcohol, while the succeeding spots were filled by heroin, cocaine, nicotine, MDMA, methamphetamine, methadone, um, amphetamine, diazepam, and THC or marijuana, with marijuana in the lowest spot, over 100 times less toxic than alcohol. And it can be surmised that its effects on health and society have been largely overestimated. If there was a plant that couldn't be more misunderstood, or was it perhaps intentionally maligned, it has to be marijuana. It's important to note that the study measured toxic effects and does not consider any social effects of the use of the drug. However, this result is a clear indication that policies on marijuana are outdated and need re-evaluation, which is something that is gradually happening. It's good news for the herb and for the use of herbs in general. Thank you, Dr. John, for that lovely little tidbit. That is just pretty freaking awesome. Oh, Vinny, you're so easily pleased. <laughs> you goofy Vinny. Okay, let me see here. Oh, I got to check out this pick. What is this pick of? Vinny. Is this your... Holy mackinoli. That is a hell of a ride. Damn, dude. I'll bet that thing is a gas guzzler. Sweet. Cool beans, Vinny. Okay. Let me put this over here in the effing site as well. Did I put it in the chat? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, we'll do those two. And I'm going to put this over on mines as well. Yes. Yeah, it should say infinitely time, infinity times less toxic because weed is the opposite of toxic. I agree with that, Grim. Yes. Okay. I don't want to know what you're doing to your ego, Vinny. I don't want to know what you call your ego either. <laughs> Just because. Okay. Now, back to my pocket I go. Because, you know, seeing as how I'm already having a little bit of fun, let's have a little bit of fun with another one, shall we? <clears throat> now, this one is going to be... I'm just going to do a quick touch on it and then share the article with you because, yeah, it's all a, a bunch of scientific stuff, but you still, you still need it. This is from ScienceDirect.com. Arborvitae, which really is a wonderful oil. It smells really good. It's an essential oil significantly inhibited critical inflammation and tissue remodeling related proteins and genes in human dermal fibroblast so yeah basically it's very good at dealing with pain and inflammation so I'm just going to go ahead and share this with you because I think you guys need this information and then I'm going to go back to my pocket and get to yes okay 
Oh, you like it? Uh, surprise, 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 Vinny. <laughs> yeah, I'm not shocked by that at all. Okay. Um, okay, do I want to go? I think I'll save that one for later. Um, okay, here we go. You know, seeing as how Vinny likes being stroked. <laughs> this one's for you, Vinny. It's from RT.com. Um, outrage as giant blue penis painted along a uh, building in Sweden. <laughs> Apparently a giantus, giant penis in the colors of Sweden's national flag, which was um, <clears throat> erected on the side of a five-story building in central Stockholm, is to be erased after shocked residents demanded its removal. The artist behind the giant phallic mural, Carolina Falkholt, um, oh, that's a fun last name, said that she hoped it would encourage passers-by, especially those shocked or repulsed, to think about why they are disturbed by human anatomy and what that means for their understanding of sex in general. Because, you know, if you have a penis, then that means you're one of those... Uh, mycinogenous kind of big mini poo poo heads that have been um, propagating this this patriarchal society that we currently live in and you're just meanies and I need to go find my safe space but they should consider what it is that they are so upset about and then talk about it yeah Sex is so important, but it always been too dirty to discuss. Well, I don't think it's too dirty to discuss, but, you know, there's, then there's people that when they're discussing, get disgusting. You know, you put that little T in there. So locals, however, seem less enthusiastic about the artist's aims and or the chances of her project having a social impact. Think of the neighbors and the children. Think of the children. That blue penis only shows how low the culture in Sweden is today. Oh, that blue penis is not showing. Dude, at least it's not blue balls attached to it. <laughs> Apparently another one wrote, I have limited faith that this outstanding monster will create dialogue around sexuality and freedom. Well, you're talking about it, aren't you? Duh. The company, which owns the residential building, said that they made the decision to paint over the penis just one week after it was unveiled because of the overwhelming number of complaints. So, some people are positive about the work and see it as playing an important part in the debate around sexuality, the body, and gender. That's what the property managers wrote in a statement. Others, particularly neighbors, have received the work less well and experience it as offensive. Of course, we care about artistic freedom, but at the same time, we must respect the opinion of our closest neighbors. Well, it's been up for a while, and now everybody will be talking about, do you remember seeing that great big blue dick? <laughs> The penis was painted on a legal graffiti wall, meaning there is no requirement to consult with local residents about the controversial artwork. Legal graffiti is part of the ongoing campaign by the art organization to inject, <laughs> I wonder if there's a pun there, more artwork on the streets of Stockholm. Inject? <laughs> oh, whoa, and then someone just turned it red. <laughs> That project, the giant erect penis depicted in pink, orange, and red, was displayed on the wall in Manhattan's Lower East Side. Oh, hey! Cool. And uh, there's a picture just above this of it. And uh, on the East Side, and drew heavy criticism from local residents. At the time, Falkholt said that her work was about not feeling ashamed of your body and who you are as a sexual being and that she also painted giant images of female genitalia. Ew. I think both of them are ill, but 
that's just me. It's not what I consider art. So, oh well. <laughs> I know, Vinny. <laughs> It is pretty funny, though. It's like, wow. Paint your, <laughs> you know, paint your penis in protest is way better than cutting it off. How many people are, yeah. How many of those, wasn't that a thing? Kind of like the Tide Pods thing. We're going to lop it off. Oh, that's brilliance. Brilliance. Okay. So, now that we've had a little bit of fun, let's check out... Ron Paul. I saw this earlier and I thought, okay, let's play. So, this is what Ron Paul had to say over on the antimedia.com. Well, actually, he said it elsewhere, but this is written by Truth and Media. Ron Paul, Assad gassing his own people is total nonsense. Now, that has been in the news a bunch over the last couple of days and it's like holy shit people how freaking ignorant do you think this guy is obviously you think the rest of us are pretty freaking ignorant so former congressman ron paul was str has strongly argued following the alleged chemical attack blamed on the syrian government that it makes no logical sense for assad to order a gas attack and has called the accusations a telltale sign of a false flag a false flag attack meant to provide justification for USA military to maintain a presence in Syria. Can you hear the military industrial complex going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we're busted. Let's do it anyway. So an incident will occur and somebody will get blamed and it's usually a false flag, said Paul. Right now, recently, it's all been in Syria. Assad did it! Assad did it! With no proof at all. And the way the people that perpetuate these false flags say that Assad is gassing his own people, at the same time, <clears throat> He's winning the war and the people are flocking back in to go to the territories that he has returned to the government of Syria. But nevertheless, he's out there gassing his own people, which makes no sense whatsoever. And fewer and fewer people are believing this. That's because we are seeing through the lies. Paul, who founded the Ron Paul Institute for Peace and Prosperity in 2013, after leaving the U.S. House, presented his analysis via the Ron Paul Liberty Report, describing how foreign policy goals related to Saudi Arabia and Iran and Russia, as well as the influence of neoconservative oil interests and the military-industrial complex, play into the current paradigm we see playing out in Syria. During an appearance on RT, Paul further elaborated that this whole idea that all of a sudden Assad's gassing his own people, I think is total nonsense. And he also pointed out that over and over again, the U.S. has claimed the Syrian or Russian government has been complicit in previous gas attacks in Syria. And the alleged poisoning of Sergei and Yulia Skripal in London. But nothing panned out. Or as Paul put it, one fake news story after another. Yes, I see a flasher. Um, what? <clears throat> oh, lives in the burbs with his peeps? Cool. Um, 
The libertarian icon then reasoned that the rush to condemn Syrian government without evidence is meant to provide a justification for those wanting the U.S. to remain in Syria and topple the Syrian government in hopes of installing a more Western-friendly regime that is not within Russia or Iran's sphere of influence. Western-friendly. Boy, if that don't send shivers down your spine. Because really, if Russia and Syria wanted to say anything about it, they could call out the USA ten ways from Sunday with all the goddamn tic-tac-toe shit going on in the sky day in and day out over here and elsewhere. Paul argued that while it provides little to no strategic benefit for Assad to gas his own people, it would greatly benefit those that are pushing for regime change, especially after Trump will stillskin recently said that he would like to remove U.S. troops from Syria. <sighs> Total nonsense, as in mix no sense. Okay, put this one over on the effing site as well. You tell it, Ron Paul. Call their sorry asses out. Because that's pretty much what they are. They're all just going, oh, we got to keep it going. And really, when you stop and look at it and all the tentacles and all the other businesses that rely on that industri military industrial complex staying in place, holy crap, that's half the, half the jobs in the United States. At least. At least. So, yeah. You know, that's one of those things where it falls under that... Um, Amorpheus, that, that very vague phrase, national security. Well, for national security reasons, what does that actually mean? Does that mean so that you can stay secure by controlling the nation? Does that mean that um, it's security for the occupants? Or is that security for those who run, say that they run the show? This whole national security, you know, for national security reasons, we must do this. Yada, 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 blah, 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 bullshit. You know, that's the only reason we're still using oil. National security reasons. Why? Because the big oil people are the ones that are paying you guys under the table. Where in the hell? I mean, they're the ones that help you, you know, spend that in military industrial complex budget so that you can keep going and keep getting more toys to blow things up because we need the oil. No, we don't. You know, they're also the ones that don't want marijuana or hemp legalized because, well, those two products will benefit the people. Whereas what we've already got going, big pharma and big oil, well, that benefits the few. Mm. Kick butt, Ron Paul. Kick butt. Take names. Don't put up with their shit. So, and it's not just Ron Paul either. It's not just Ron Paul. Because here we go. This is from ZeroHedge.com. And it is from today. Russia has irrefutable evidence that UK staged Syrian chemical attack. UK. Hmm, UK, US, Israel. UN, there's an awful lot of UE, 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 UEs involved in this shit. So, as the blame game over the alleged chemical attack in Syria escalates ahead of what is expected to be an imminent, if contained, airstrike campaign by the U.S., U.K., and or France against Syria on Friday morning, Russia's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, said Moscow had irrefutable evidence that the attack, which allegedly killed more than 40 people in an April the 7th chemical weapons strike on the former rebel outpost in Duma, was staged with the help of foreign secret service. 
Dun, dun, dun. Hmm. All these lovely people that are pointing fingers that seem to forget that every time you point a finger of blame and shame at someone else, you got three fingers pointing right back at you. Sorry, ass. Hmm. So, speculation that said certain state was the uh, UK was confirmed shortly after. When Russia's defense ministry alleged that Britain was involved in the suspected chemical attack. According to Defense Ministry spokesman Major General Igor Konoshinikov, yeah, I'm sure I buggered that one, from the Kremlin, oh yeah, that, mm, it's, it's from the Kremlin, must be true. Yeah, they have evidence that Britain was behind the attack. I'm sure Britain was probably involved, as well as Israel and the U.S., and probably multiple other people all at the banker's behest yeah because how are you going to keep getting that interest on that fake debt if you don't spend that fake money and then accrue more fake interest on that fake debt Quoted by Reuters, he said, We have evidence that proves Britain was directly involved in organizing this provocation. As RT further adds, the Russian Defense Ministry presented what it says is proof that the reported chemical attack in Syria was staged. No, say it isn't so. Shock, shock. It also accused the British min uh, government of pressuring the perpetrators to speed up the provocation. Ooh, it's a provocation. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And during a briefing on Friday, the ministry showed interviews with two people who it said are medical professionals working in the only hospital operating in Douma, a town near the Syrian capital Damascus. During a briefing on Friday, the ministry showed interviews with two people who it said are medical professionals working in the only hospital operating in Douma. In the interviews released to the media, the two men reported how footage was shot of people dousing each other with water and treating children, which was claimed to show the aftermath of the April 7th chemical attacks. The patient, patients shown in the video suffered from smoke poisoning and water was poured on them by their relatives after a false claim that chemical weapons were used. Please notice, these people do not hide their names. These are not some faceless claims on the social media by anonymous activists. They took part in taking that footage. Yeah, you know, anonymous sources. Oh, that's really credible. That's really... How many, frick, how many anonymous sources does it take to get people to swallow a false flag? Ha one, ha two, the world may never know. The Russian Defense Ministry has evidence that Britain had direct involvement in arranging this provocation in eastern Ghouta. That's what the general added, referring to the neighborhood in which Duma is part. We know for certain that between April 3rd and April 6th, the so-called White Helmets were seriously pressured from London to speed up the provocation that they were preparing. The White Helmets, yeah, those guys that are trying to get you to wink, wink, believe that they're good guys, wink, wink. And, according to the general, the group, which was a primary source of photos and footage of the purported chemical attack, was informed of the large-scale artillery attack on Damascus planned by the Islamic group Army of Islam, which controlled Duma at the time. The White Helmets were ordered to arrange the provocation after retaliatory strikes by the Syrian government forces which the shelling was certain to lead to. Now, the UK rejected the accusations. Nuh-uh, we didn't do it. Oh, wait, I got to do that in a British... No, forget it. I'm, I'm not going to bother with the British accent. That was the British UN ambassador, Karen Pierce, calling them grotesque and a blatant lie and the worst piece of fake news we've yet seen from the Russian propaganda machine. Really? Really? 
That's okay. That's the worst piece of fake news you've seen from the Russian propaganda machine. But how does it measure up compared to your propaganda machine? Huh? Inquiring minds would like to know. And yeah, we've all seen the wonderful pictures of somebody that was damaged in a bombing or killed in a bombing. But shortly after the photos were taken, he was seen posing for Facebook with his arms around his rescuers, smiling. Mm, yeah, tell me again how this works. Y'all got holy water over there? Is that what's going on? Apparently, one of the interviews published by the ministry showed a man who said his name was Hali Ajij and who said that he was a medical student working in Dumas' only operational hospital. This is how he described the original footage. On April 8th, a bomb hit a building. The upper floors were damaged and a fire broke to the lower floors. Victims of that bombing were brought to us. People from the upper floors had smoke poisoning. We treated them based on their suffocation. Okay, I would think bomb, big kaboom. Oh, use a Jew accent? I'm not real good at that either. <laughs> you Jew bastards. But, um, ooh, some candy-coated white helmets? <laughs> no thanks. I'm sure they're poison. Mmm. Apparently, Ajiz said that the man unknown to him came and said that there was a chemical attack and panic ensued. Relatives of the victims started dousing each other with water. Other people who didn't seem to have medical training started administering anti-asthma medicine to children, which, if you don't know, that can be very detrimental if you do not have asthma. Yeah. Uh, we didn't see any patient with symptoms of a chemical weapons poisoning, he said. And the first photos claiming to show the aftermath of the alleged chemical attack on April 7th were published online on the same day and featured the bodies of many people, including children, some with foam around their mouths and noses. Footage from the hospital was released on Sunday with the sources behind it claiming that it had been shot on Saturday foaming at the mouth hmm did you did somebody make them eat soap oh yeah let's not forget bbc on 911 that is true frumpy back room <laughs> wow yeah and and this just in building 7 has collapsed oh shit we weren't supposed to do that for another 20 minutes were we damn it cut cut yeah yeah just like some of that CNN footage of, we're in Riyadh, and the, yeah, wee, 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 oh, man, I'm just, whoo, this is better than the old, the original Batman TV show. Wow, where does the kabow and the kazang come in? Ooh, I'm waiting on the edge of my seat for this. See, and I wonder if sometimes this is in order to get people to develop some kind of apathy towards it you know and, and to start it, it becomes a, a boy who call, call, cried wolf kind of syndrome and they do the bullshit 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 false flag false flag false flag and then when it really happens we're all going false flag oh shit no it wasn't yeah I wonder because you know any kind of controlled opposition you really need to understand this as well any kind of controlled opposition odds are they give you like anywhere from 70 to 90 percent truth but then they put they put some outlandish shit in there and they do that so that they can get people who do a little bit of critical thinking to once they get to the outlandish shit they go dude seriously is that what this is all about i'm not, i'm i'm out of here i ain't even gonna research anymore that's what they do. That's how they get people to stop looking into things because they will give you a lot of very vital, very factual information and then intersperse it with little lawn fudge. We'll just leave it at that. 
Apparently, residents of the neighborhood who previously fled violence are returning to their homes now that the area is relatively safe. How can the area be relatively safe if it was uh, chemical weapons were used? Because from what I understand, when that stuff's used, it gets into the... Uh, the walls and the flooring, you know, and, and it permeates everything, you know, kind of like those gas chambers over in Germany. You shouldn't be able to walk into those things because you should still be able to smell that stuff. Not that I'm a denier or anything. I'm just saying prove it. Prove it. Because I ain't swallowing your bullshit. I stepped away from the propaganda trough, and I, lo I no longer drink the Fool Aid, so prove it. In any case, they have returned. Latest reports from the ground say that 63,000 people have returned, which is over half of the displaced residents. The reported chemical att weapons attack escalated tensions over Syria just as Damascus was about to seize full control of eastern Ghouta. The U.S. and al allies such as the U.K. and France threatened military action in response to what they claim is an atrocity committed by the Syrian government. Russia insists the incident was staged and said it reserves the right to counter any attack on Syria. If Syria asks Russia to come help them, which I think Russia has been invited multiple times, whereas we have not, you know, and this whole thing of we're going to bring democracy to you. No, you're not going to bring democracy and you're not going to bring peace unless you change the spelling of it. And then you're going to bomb the peace out of them or bomb them to peace as RT also spoke about Russian claims with Lord Alan West. Uh, it's the lordly one, who is a retired officer for the British Royal Navy. And he said he had strong reservations about take, uh, taking allegations against Damascus at face value. Because it didn't make much military sense. Durr. It seems to be utterly ludicrous for the military that is in the process of taking over an area to go and do something with chemical weapons, which will draw the wrath of the large enemy down upon them. If I was advising the opponents of Syrian President Bashar Assad, I would be delighted to kill a few people there. Let's face it, the insurgents don't care if they kill women and children. I'm not willing to accept tweets. We need to see incontrovertible truth about what has happened there and make a decision on that basis. There, how was that for a British accent? <laughs> Pretty sucky. Oh, well. On Wednesday, Russia made the first allegation that the chemical attack was staged by Russian powers, in this case by the infamous White Helmets, a U.S.-funded NGO lauded by mainstream media, the corporate lame-ass propaganda system, for their humanitarian work, while long suspected of performing less than humanitarian deeds behind the curtain, a.k.a. child um smuggling, uh, kidnapping and smuggling and rapes and murders and, 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 yeah, they're disgusting. Speaking with Euronews, uh, Russia's ambassador to the EU, Vladimir Chizov, said, I'm sure I said that wrong too, said Russian military specialists have visited the region, walked on those streets, entered those houses, talked to local doctors, and visited the only functioning hospital in Duma, including its basement where reportedly the mountains of corpses pile up. There was not a single corpse and not even a single person who came in for treatment after the attack. But we've seen them on video, so it must be true. It's on the internet. It must be. It was on YouTube. Must be true. Of course, there was no chemical attack. Pure and simple. We've seen another staged event. And there are personnel specifically trained. And you can guess by whom 
amongst the so-called white helmets who were already caught in the act of staged videos. Russia said previously that it sent experts in radiological, chemical, and biological warfare, along with the medics, in order to inspect the eastern Gouda city of Duma, where the attack is said to have taken place. Russia's defense ministry said in a statement that the experts found no traces of the use of chemical agents following a search of the sites adding that these facts show that no chemical weapons were used in that town as it is claimed by white helmets. Now, before I get too much further, I am going to say that just because I agree with this opinion doesn't necessarily mean it's true because, after all, it is on the internet, so it must be true. But, I am to the point where every time those drums of war start beating, I don't care if I got a toe that starts tapping or not. I'm going to stomp on that little toe and I'm going to say, cut that shit out. Because you know all they're doing is trying to get people up and dancing to that beat. No. No. So I'm calling bullshit. All the accusations brought by the White Helmets, as well as their photos, allegedly showing the victims of the chemical attack, are nothing more than a yet another piece of fake news and an attempt to disrupt the ceasefire. In any case, if Russia indeed has irrefutable evidence, it is probably just a matter of time before it's made public in an attempt to sway public opinion. I don't think it's going to take much to sway public opinion against war with Syria. Ideally, before any Syrian airstrikes begin again. If confirmed, it would be a major slap in the face to the neocon forces across Western democracies. How about demon crazies? That sounds a lot better. Western demon crazies. If hardly a shock, after all, the U.S. using a fabricated pretext to wage war or simply to affect a much-needed distraction from domestic affairs in the Middle East is a painfully familiar narrative. And, you know, kind of like that thing that went on down in Florida. I'm not saying that people weren't killed because those bloodthirsty bastards will kill people. They don't have a problem with killing people. But that was that school shooting on Valentine's Day. Can you smell false flag? You can smell it all the way across the country. It's a bunch of shite. Okay. What is this minds thing that you're sharing, Grimmy? I got to take a peek. <sighs> Mark Dice. Even if the Syria strikes start World War III, the whole planet gets nuked and we all die. That's still much better than if Hillary would have won. <laughs> no. <laughs> Good try, though. Good try. You're funny. Um, World War III started a long time ago, sweetheart. And the battlefield is your mind. And you are being mind-fucked on a daily basis until you tell them to put a condom on or get your little tinfoil hat. No. No. All of this is just window dressing, you know, and I hate to say it like that because that diminishes the impact of all these bombs and all the people that are killed. But that's just window dressing. This war has been going on for quite some time, peeps. And the sooner you grasp that, the better off you'll be. Because knowing what you're up against is defi will definitely let you know where you do not wish to go. And where you do wish to go, That's defi that gives you a nice clear dividing line. I don't want this. I want to try this and work towards what you want to try and make that other obsolete. Don't go there. We do not want war in Syria. We do not want bombs flying through the air. <sighs> Yikes.
Okay. Let's see if I can find something a little more fun. Dang. I've been at this a while. I've been ranting and raving, and I've been at this for a while. Touching on all kind of things. I've been touching things. <laughs> be afraid. Be very afraid. Okay. Where's the other one I wanted to go to? Um. Oh, this one. Yes. Condom snort. Oh, that's what it is. Condom snorting. So they're trying to protect their mind from being mind fucked. Thank you, Vinny. Damn, you're good at that. Holy smokes, I hadn't thought of it like that. But there you go. Um, okay, this is one I'm just going to kind of touch on real quick, and then I'm going to kind of move along. Uh, but I, I, I don't even remember where in the hell I saw it this morning. Uh, hmm. Thinking, thinking, thinking. I don't remember where I saw it. But it's from journal-neo.org. Genies and Genocide. Syria, Israel, Russia, and much oil. The geopolitical stakes in the Middle East have just gotten higher in order of magnitude. Take a little-known Newark, New Jersey oil company, the contested Golan Heights between Syria and Israel, at a reported major oil discovery there, just as Russia's bombing campaign in Syria goes into high gear, and shake it vigorously, and we have a potential detonator for World War III. Dun, dun, dun. Now, I have to tell you, this is from October of 2015, but... This is a little backstory here, okay? This is kind of sort of why they keep pushing for this shit because oil companies, big banks, bloodthirsty asshats. Initially, going back more than a decade when Washington neoconservative think tanks and the Bush-Cheney administration were devising their greater Middle East regime change agenda competing natural gas pipelines through Syria to Turkey or via Lebanon to the Mediterranean played a definite supporting role in Washington's war on Syria's Assad. Yes. So, now oil, lots of oil, comes into play. And Israel is claiming theirs. Hmm, I wondered why they were pushing for the Golan Heights. Ah, you dirty Palestinians, do you not know that Palestine is not real? Go away. We want this land. Throw rocks. We will shoot you. Assholes. The only problem is that it isn't. The oil is in the Golan Heights, which Israel illegally took from Syria in the 1967 Six-Day War. Ah... And here's a genie in a stinky bottle. So what do Dick Cheney, James Woolsey, Bill Richardson, Jacob Lord Rothschild, Rupert Murdoch, Larry Summers, and Michael Steinhardt have in common? Hmm. Other than being evil diabolical asshats? I don't know. Let's find out. They all are members of the Strategic Advisory Board of a Newark, New Jersey-based oil and gas group with the name Genie Energy. It's quite a collection of names, don't you think? Dick Cheney, before becoming George W. Bush's shadow president in 2001, was CEO of the world's largest oil field services company, Halliburton also reported to be a CIA-linked company tied to the Bush family cabal. James Woolsey, a neocon former CIA director under Bill Clinton, good old Slick Willie, today sits as the chairman of the neocon think tank, Foundation for Defense of Democracies, or Demon Crazies, and is a member of the pro um uh, pro Likud, is that what it is? Washington Institute for Near East Policy. Ooh, Washington Institute for Near East Policy. That sounds very official. 
He was a member of the infamous Project for the New America Century. Along with Cheney, Donald Rumsfeld, and a gaggle of neocons who later staffed the Bush-Cheney administration. After September 11, 2001, Woolsey referred to the Bush-Cheney War on Terror as World War IV, counting the Cold War as World War III, which I told you, war on your mind. Bill Richardson is a former U.S. Secretary of Energy, and Rupert Murdoch owns a major U.S. and U.K. media, including the Wall Street Journal, is a major financier of the neocon or neoconservative weekly standard of Bill Kristol, and founded PNAC. PNAC. Oh, that's that big blue penis on the wall. No wonder people were offended. Larry Summers was U.S. Treasury Secretary and drafted the laws that deregulated U.S. banks from the 1933 Glass-Steagall Act. Oh, single finger salutes flying high here. In effect, opening the floodgates to the U.S. financial crisis of 2007 and 2015. Michael Steinhardt, the hedge fund speculator, is a philanthropic friend of Israel of Mark Rich and a board member of Woolsey's Neocon Foundation for the Defense of Demon Crazies. And well, then there's Lord, Jacob Lord Rothschild, who is a former business partner, partner of convicted Russian oil oligarch Mikhail, uh, yeah, Mikhail, because I can't get that last name. Hell with it. Before his arrest, Mikhail secretly transferred his shares of Yukos oil to Rothschild. Huh. Shock. Rothschild is part owner of Genie Energy, which, is, which in 2013 was granted exclusive oil and gas exploration rights to a 153 square mile radius in the southern part of the Golan Heights by Nutty Yahoo government. Oh, nutty Yahoo, you're such a nut. In short, it's quite an eye-popping board. Yes, it is. Then, the Israel government gave the concession to Genie in the disputed Golan Heights in 2013 when the U.S.-led destabilization of the Syrian Assad regime was in full force. Conveniently... Israel also began building fortifications at that time to seal off the illegally occupied Golan Heights from Syria. Knowing there was little Assad or Syria could do to stop it. Why? Because we're Israel. Go ahead. Go ahead. Try it. We are the chosen people. Yeah. You just don't tell us what you're chosen for. We think you were chosen to go clean the shit house. Whereas you think you're, cho you think that you are above everyone. Whereas we all know you are the floaters, and it takes several buckets to get you to flush down. Mm. Apparently, in 2013, as Genie Energy began moving into the Golan Heights, Israel military engineers overhauled the 45-mile border fence with Syria replacing it with steel barricade that includes barbed wire, touch sensors, motion detectors, infrared cameras, and ground radar, putting it on par with the wall Israel has constructed on the West Bank. There you go. There's our wall problem solved right there. They are so damn good at building walls. Have them build the wall between Mexico and U.S. That'll be, we've paid them enough money, that's the least they could do. <laughs> yeah, right. Like that, people don't realize you built that wall, that not only keeps people out, it also keeps people in. Yeah, it's like the raid, uh, those those cockroach hotels, those raid, raid hotel, what, what were those things called? Yeah, roaches go in, but they never go out. Kind of like the Hotel California, actually, only not such cool music. In any case, so uh, now as Damascus fights for its life, apparently Genie has discovered a huge oil field right there in the Golan Heights. However, it was illegally occupied by Israel, 
and in 1981, Israel passed the Golan Heights Law, imposing Israel laws, jurisdiction, and administration to the Golan Heights because, and it must be true, and it must be fact, and it must be enforced because it's a bunch of squiggly lines on paper, and a lot of very important Israelis said it's true, and so you got to listen and behave. Apparently, and this was in response to UN Secretary Council or Security Council passed Resolution 242, which declared Israel must redraw, withdraw from all lands occupied in the 1967 war with Syria, including the Golan Heights. So, see, this is how they deal with that. Because, you know, they're always saying, well, we need to have international law and we need to go by international law until it tells me to, tells us to do something that we don't want to do. And then we'll just write a whole bunch of squiggles and lines on some paper and we'll say nanny nanny boo boo. We like ours better. It's pretty much the way that works over there. Or anywhere, actually, if you want to know. Again, in 2008, a Plen plenary, what the hell is that, uh, session of the UN General Assembly passed resolu uh, resolution 600 in favor of a motion on the Golan Heights that reaffirmed Security Council Resolution 497, which was passed in 1981 after the Israeli de facto annexation declaring the Golan Heights law. Ah, Oh, and it declared it null and void and without international legal effect. Bada bing, bada boom. See, we have squiggles and lines on paper, too. So there. And it called on Israel to desist from changing the physical character, demographic composition, institutional structure, and legal status of the occupied Syrian Golan, and in particular, to desist from the establishment of settlements and from imposing Israeli citizenship and Israeli ident identity cards on the Syrian citizens in the occupied Syrian Golan and from its repressive measures against the population of the occupied Syrian Golan. But they didn't listen, did they? Why? Because they're Israel and nanny nanny boo boo. We're the chosen ones. Yeah, once again, do we have to go there again? Israel was the only nation to vote against the resolution. I'm shocked. Shocked, I tell ya. As recently as June of 2007, Israeli Prime Minister um, Ehud Olmert, whatever, sent a secret communique to the Syrian President Bashar Assad saying that Israel would concede the Golan Heights in exchange for a comprehensive peace agreement and the severing of Syrian ties with Iran and militant groups in the region. In other words, we're just going to hold on to this until you pay the extortion. I'm thinking mafia, uh, gang, uh, oh wait, government? That applies to them too. Hmm. On October 8th, in a second week of Russian airstrikes against ISIS and other so-called moderate terrorists. How can you be a moderate terrorist? Is that like pregnant light? You know, if you're still in the second trimester, it's pregnant light. You're moderately pregnant because you're really not pooching out very far. Hmm. Okay, whatever. But these moderate terrorists, at the request of the, uh, wait a minute here. Oh, it was at the request of the Assad government. And the chief geologist from Genie Energy Israel subsidiary, um, Afek Oil and Gas, told Israel's Channel 2 TV that his company had found a major oil reserve on the Golan Heights. We found an oil stratum 350 meters thick in the southern Golan Heights. On average, worldwide, strata are 20 to 30 meters thick. And this is 10 times as large as that. So we are uh, talking about significant quantities. I think we need to quit pumping oil out of, out of Mother Gaia because that is Mother Gaia's lubrication. And why do you think we're having so damn many earthquakes? You guys are taking the lube out of it. Stop it. That's my personal opinion. I have no scientific facts to base it on, but, you know... 
There's so much scientific stuff out there, yeah. Scientism. So, this oil find has now made the Golan Heights a strategic prize that clearly has the nutty Yahoo government more determined than ever to sow chaos and disorder in Damascus and use that to de facto create an Israeli irreversible occupation of Golan and its oil. We said it's ours, we s but we said we'll bomb you. We'll just bomb you. And then we'll take it. If we can't have it, no one can. That's the mentality that's going on right now. Apparently, a minister in the nutty Yahoo coalition government said that, uh, who is a minister of education and minister of Desporia affairs and leader of the right-wing religious party, the Jewish home, has made a proposal that Israel settle 100,000 new Israeli settlers across the Golan in five years. Why? Because if they push you out and if they go forth and multiply, and if they continue, if they do what they're doing to the Palestinians, holy shite. Yeah, that's what they do. That's It's pretty much like what they're doing to Europe right now. You know, you send all of these people that are refugees from war. Yeah. Guess what? You keep supporting Israel, and this is what happens. Those ever so good intentions, they do sometimes have negative ramifications. Especially if those that you, you know, well-meaning intentions or whatever, because, you know, you had, the people that swallowed it and went along with it had to have been well-meaning, or at least some of them were. And, you know, they're thinking, oh, but, you know, they were so put upon during the Holocaust. Well, it wasn't just the Jews, but that's that's totally immaterial. But, uh, yeah, according to their storyline. But, you know, it... When you, when you bully someone out of the way in order to, you know, make concessions for someone else, and then you allow that someone else to become a monster 20 times more diabolical than the monster that they claim that abused them, and they're doing it to everyone around them, they are not discriminate, discriminatory, you reap what you sow. So it doesn't make a shit bit of difference how good your intentions were. You reap what you sow. Hmm. Apparently he argues that with Syria disintegrating after years of civil war, it's hard to imagine a stable state to which the Golan Heights could be returned. Further, a growing chorus of Tel Aviv is arguing that Nutty Yahoo demand American recognition of Israel's 1981 annexation of Golan as an appropriate salve to Israeli security concerns in the wake of the nuclear deal with Iran. Oh, see, national security. There you go. That's what national security comes down to. We're just going to go take your land. It does, do, Pay no attention to the fact that we will be filthy, wit, rich, and rolling in oil. We're going to take your land for national security purposes. Makes sense now. I'm starting to get it. Apparently, the energy war has been a significant component of the U.S., Israel, Qatar, Turkish, and until recently, Saudi strategy against Syria's Assad regime. I'm wondering if this is kind of sort of a lead up to what they did in Libya as well. Assad, dude, seriously, I hope you have good bodyguards. Because did you see what they did in Libya? It wasn't pretty. Before the latest Golan Heights oil discovery, the focus on Assad pivoted on a huge regional national gas resource of both Qatar and Iran on opposite sides of the Persian Gulf, comprising the largest known gas discovery in the world to date. And in 2009, the government of Qatar, today home of the Muslim Brotherhood and a major funder of ISIS in Syria and Iraq, met with Bashar al-Assad in Damascus. So, Qatar proposed to Bashar that Syria join in an agreement to allow the transit gas pipeline from Qatar's huge north field in the Persian Gulf adjacent to Iran's huge south Pars gas field. 
the Qatar pipeline would have gone through Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Syria, and on to Turkey to supply European markets, and most crucially, it would bypass Russia. An agents, um, agency France press report claimed that Assad's rationale was to protect the interests of his Russian ally, which is Europe's top supplier of natural gas. So see, they follow the money. In 2010, Assad instead joined talks with Iran and Iraq for an alternative $10 billion pipeline plan that would also potentially allow Iran to supply gas to Europe from its South Pars field in the Iranian waters of the Persian Gulf. And the three countries signed a Memorandum of Understanding in 2012. Just as Syria's civil war was spreading to Damascus and Aleppo. Huh, quinky dink? I don't believe in quinky dinks. So now, an apparent discovery of huge volumes of oil by the New Jersey Oil Company, whose board includes Iraq war architect Dick Cheney, neocon ex-CIA head James Woolsey, and Jacob Lord Rothschild, business partners of one Vladimir Putin's most bitter critics, Mikhail whatever whatever, bring the stakes of the Russian intervention on behalf of Syria's Assad against ISIS, Al Qaeda, and other CIA backed moderate terrorists to a new geopolitical dimension. The U.S. coup in Ukraine in 2014 and its financing and training of ISIS and other moderate terrorist gangs, gangs in Syria, all have one prime target, Russia and her network of allies, a network, ironically, which Washington and Israel policies are expanding almost by the hour. Wow. Hmm. So, another way of looking at another another little puzzle piece falls into place. And you know what? Gaddafi really wasn't the big old meanie poo-poo head that they want us to believe. There was um, everybody got free college, free health care. You know, they were sharing in the the spoils of the oils, basically. He was sharing it with the population. He could ride around without bulletproof glass and all that other fun stuff through the streets of whatever town, and nobody wanted to take his ass out. They all liked him. But he was coming up with his own money based on the gold standard. We can't have that. Ooh, the biggest boogeymen are now moderates. Isn't that just funny, Grim? Ah, crazy, I tell you. It's just crazy. Okay. Pedivore, oh God. And yeah, let's not even get into the pedophile shit. Uh, I've been catching up on my Ben Swan stuff, and man, he is definitely covering stuff that most places won't. Not necessarily even, it's not that they can't, it's they won't. No, we won't go there. No, we don't want to do that. Yada, 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 yada. Oh. Uh. All for oil. Just imagine how peaceful this world would be if we did not have an oil-based economy. But then again, national security. Okay. I think I've had enough of this nonsense. I'm going to go check out the pig and find some real fun stuff. Because it is a Freaker Friday, Friday the 13th. We need to have some freakish fun just as well. So, um, word of the day is monkey business. It's an apt name for the antics of those swamp rats of all political persuasions who are determined to turn America into a banana republic. Yes, they want to level the playing field. So that means instead of bringing third world countries up to our standard of living, it's much easier to knock us down to theirs. 
and they have a lot more fun at it as well. In the quotable quotes section, look, this is a very dangerous day today for lawyer-client relations. I deal with clients all the time. I tell them on my word of honor that what you tell me is sacrosanct. And now they say, just based on probable cause, even though there was cooperation with Cone, and they can burst into the office, grab all the computers, and give it to another FBI agent and say, you're the firewall. We, um, yeah, you're the firewall. We want you to now to read all these confidential communications. Tell us which ones we can get and which ones we can't get. You know, if this were the shoe on the other foot, if this were Hillary Clinton being investigated and they went into her lawyer's office, the ACLU would be on every television station in America jumping up and down. The deafening silence of the ACLU and civil libertarians, libertarians my dying ass, about the intrusion into the lawyer-client confidentiality is really appalling. That is from Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz. Now, you know, the attorney-client privilege thing, that's one of those things that's supposed to be sacrosanct, along with innocent until proven guilty. Well, I guess we're starting to really see that both of those went to the wayside a long time ago. They only apply when the leeches that be wish for them to apply. Other than that, it's like, you don't have that right. Really? Wow, I thought rights were something that could not be taken away. You know, something that is not granted to you by another human being and could not be taken away. You know, like your liberty, not supposed to be taken away. It does get taken away, but no, they do not have a right to do that. Hi. They do not have a right to kill you. They do not have a right to take your money, as in taxes is extortion. It's theft. Where's that one commandment again? Thou shalt not steal. Huh. <sighs> Let's find something fun, shall we? Um. What is this? Okay. Largest black. I'm scrolling because they got all kinds of stuff in their tidbits section, but I'm not real sure I want to read their tidbits section. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so this date in history, the 13th of April, 1970. The Oakland Athletics decide to make their home opener memorable by using gold-colored bases. Unamused Rules Committee says, don't try that again. Why not? Why not? What the hell's wrong with that? Wussies. Wanny wanny woo woos. Okay. Also, this date in history, the 13th of April, 1976. Inexplicably obsessed with a $2 bill, Uncle Sam run the damn thing up the U.S. currency flagpole. Again. But nobody salutes this time. Ether. And you know what? You go in to pay for something with a $2 bill, and most kids will say, that's counterfeit. I can't take that. Most of them have no freaking clue that... It's just as close to being real money as the any other shit. <laughs> well, literally, it is just as close to being real money as any of the other stuff. So, okay. Let me see here. I'm going to go back to my pocket because I do have one more article that I definitely have to get to today just because. Just because. This is from um, WideOpenSpaces.com. World Naked Gardening Day is May 6th. Did you know that? Apparently, World Naked, Naked Gardening Day is May 6th. So, are you prepared? No. <laughs> 
It's an opportunity to pull weeds, plant flowers, and harvest vegetables while getting some sun where it doesn't usually shine. So while you might get a little dirty, the intention is good, clean fun in the sun and a move towards becoming more comfortable in our skin with non-sexual nudity. Yeah, sorry. I don't know of too many men folk that, you know, they drive by, they see a female out there gardening in the nude. You can't tell me that they would not have sexual thoughts. I've sinned before you and my God, I had sexual thoughts. Yeah, <laughs> you, you can't tell me that ain't going to happen. Apparently, this is inspired by, inspired by World Naked Bike Ride events. Hi. Ouch. And uh, that's from Mark Story, who is consulting editor for Nude and Natural magazine, and permaculturist Jacob Gabriel, who founded World Naked Gardening Day as a project of Body Freedom Collaborative, or BFC. <laughs> Some of Story's other mischievous pranks are rooted in guerrilla gardening in urban environments. Okay. Corky Stanton of the Clothes Free International assisted uh, Story with web hosting and promoting the project. And Stanton also provided web hosting and promotion for World Naked Bike Ride. Yeah. Oh, from the very beginning of that project. The event is not intended to be a large gathering at any particular location, but something people can practice on their own time and at their own will, however they please. No particular organization owns World Naked Gardening Day. There you go. Yay, so you can, you can have your naked gardening whenever you want to. You crazy naked person, you, you nude put, you nudist, you. Don't look, Ethel. The website acted as a seed for the concept, which has been left to grow organically on its own through participants providing the necessary nutrients in order for it to continue to grow. <laughs> the first annual World, World Naked Gardening Day um, took um, that event took place September 10th, 2005. In 2007, the event date was moved to the first Saturday in May, where it still takes place to this day. Well, the first Saturday in May is not, because this is from last year. So let me see what the first Saturday in May is. That's May the 5th. So, naked girl. Oh, man, I would have been two days or one day late. I'd have been doing that on a Sunday. Holy crap. <laughs> No, I wouldn't. If I was doing any naked gardening, it'd be in my house. So, <laughs> apparently it still takes place to this day on the first Saturday of May. Um, and it's the day before International Permaculture Day also takes place the first Sunday of May. So, beyond the fact that the event is fitting to coincide with good weather, yeah, it's the middle of April and I got a freaking blizzard. Last year, the end of April, I had a freaking blizzard. Excuse me? Mm. The, obje the objective was not to conflict with the World Naked Bike Ride. Mm. Besides spring is the ideal time of the year to be in the garden anyway. Well, yeah, kind of, sort of. The event is intended to be non-political and more about creating a positive body self-image. Okay. It's not about exposing your body to other people, said Stanton in an interview with Today. It's about body acceptance and being one with nature on your own. We actually do these events in secluded areas. Okay, I don't have a place that's properly secluded to be able to do this unless I garden inside my house. <laughs> Special thanks to the host of the World Naked Gardening Day website for allowing us to use the photos, which there are photos here. And for more information on the event, please visit the website wngd.org 
or their um, like their Facebook page, facebook.com slash WNGD2005. So, um, what's that? Oh, being laid to rest as mushroom food. Huh, that's at the end of this. So, okay. What? Oh, yay! Have your plastic and laminated piece of paper hung around your neck and am ready to hit the fair after. Good job, Vinny! You overachiever, you! Oh, well. How fun. So, how many of y'all are going to be naked gardeners on the first Saturday of May? <laughs> I don't want to see pictures, honest to God. You know, if you want to be be comfortable in your own skin, there ain't nothing wrong with being comfortable in your own skin. But there is such a thing as, you know, having a little bit of common sense and being out there naked gardening and insects and possible snakes and sunburn and no. I will be clad. I will have something covering up my birthday suit. <laughs> Trust me, you don't want me to go there. So, <laughs> that is kind of funny, though. Uh, keep it up. And you know what? If you want to go out there and, and garden in the nudicus, that's that's your business. But, no, not me. Ain't going to happen. Sorry. Okay. Um, wow, I am just about out of time. Thanks, y'all, for listening in. This has been Grammy's Rocket Cheer here on this Freaker Friday the 13th, and it has been a blustery and blizzardy day out here in Grammy land. Um, be sure to stick around because later on we'll be Grimner and Moose Girl with the Freaker's Ball, and I'm sure they will have all kinds of Freaktastic Friday the 13th stuff for you. Also, tomorrow morning for me, if I have electricity, or noon Eastern time will be the Dork Table with yours truly and Flash Rooney Dork. Then Sunday at noon Eastern time, Grimner will be coming on the RLM with some bodacious blues to lead you into Hal Anthony, who's going to open up a can of whoop ass on yo ass behind the woodshed. And Hal knows how to open up a can of whoop ass. I bet you he could do it with one hand tied behind his back. I bet he could. Also, Sunday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Gary Ellen Gigi's Boo with The Road Less Traveled. So, let's see. I still have about five minutes. Let me take a peek and see if I have another, a little quickie <laughs> to go to. Um, let's see. Uh, da, da. I'll find something fun. Am I going to have to go to Oopie? I may have to go to Oopie because my pocket's just not doing it for me. Damn it. So, Oopie. Oopie. U-P-I. Yes. Yes, you're an overachiever. <laughs> Imagine that. Hey, here you go. Here's a fun one. All you Nintendo fans, check out your games. Okay, this is from UPI.com. A collector finds drugs hidden inside Nintendo games. Uh, a Georgia collector who bought a stash of retro Nintendo games at a flea market discovered two of the cartridges were filled with packages of drugs. Julian Turner, a new of Newman posted a video to YouTube showing him examining his day's flea market haul, which included multiple Nintendo Entertainment System games from the 1980s. Turner said his, in, his interest was piqued when he noticed one of the cartridges, Roller Games, was the European-Australian release. And he said the game and a copy of Golf were also found to weigh about 50% more than they should have. 
Turner opened the two cartridges and discovered that they contained small packages of what appeared to be narcotics. The Newman Police Department opened an investigation into the discovery and detectives said the packages appeared to have been inside the cartridges for a very long time before they ended up at the market. Turner said he was researching his unusual discovery and found out that another copy of Golf purchased by a collector a few years ago was found to have been filled with 5,000 cash in bills that dated from 1985. Cool! Well, so there you go. All you Nintendo fans, go to the flea markets. I know you're gonna. <laughs> Oh, well. Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com Channel 3. Thank you ever so much for listening in and playing along. And uh, I hope you have an absolutely amazing rest of your Freaker Friday the 13th evening or Saturday, wherever you are in the world. And uh, I will catch up with you later. And Moosey, stay warm, darling. If you guys are out there with this blustering going on, which I know there's multiple states that are getting hammered, please be careful. Don't get out if you don't have to.